So a new research study finds that about a third of people under the age of 30 now regularly scroll through TikTok for news. And last week we saw Bin Laden's letter to America go viral on the platform. They have brainwashed us to think that we was the best country in the plan on the planet. If you are disgusted by terror and bigotry and violence, you should be disgusted by the terror and bigotry and violence of the United States government. Well, TikTok is going to save this generation. The amount of things that we've learned on this app in this past month alone, that other people in other generations, I try to talk to them about it, they don't understand. So how concerned should we be about the app's appeal to Gen Z and beyond? Let's bring in Dr. Lisa Palmer a psychotherapist, and Carl Zabo, professor of internet law at George Mason University. Uh, doctor, I just finished a book signing, and it was like the number one question from parents and grandparents. What is going on here? Well, there's a lot going on. I mean, uh, technology has a lot of power, and a lot of people are, are turning to TikTok. I can't even tell you how many people have told me that TikTok has even become their therapy. They're getting advice from TikTok. So we cannot deny the power of technology. And we have to be able to have corporate consciousness and 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 our own consciousness and, and really be careful what we're, we're watching and what we're listening to and take care of our own mental diet. So Carl, when you look at the numbers, so 22% of users in 2020 got their news from TikTok. Okay, now we got 43% of users in 2023. So obviously there's a massive jump there. Where is that coming from? Look, we don't have a tech problem. We have a societal problem. Fake news is nothing new. I mean, you have members of Congress saying Israel bombed the hospital. Mm -hmm. You have the front page of the New York Times repeating it. And now people are looking for other avenues of information. And the Internet is there. But the answer is that we as parents, we as Americans, need to begin looking, teaching, and learning. We need to look at what our kids are doing. We need to teach them about the truths of history, and we need to learn better ways to educate ourselves than just looking at social media or even looking at what we're seeing on the front page of the New York Times. So it's up to us as Americans to take control of our destiny. Carl, you're so right. Dr. Palmer, the question is, is it too late? Well, I think technology is here to stay. Our phones are real estate. People go to bed with their phones. They wake up to their phones. And technology has real power. Apps have huge power. And again, going back to what the professor said, you know, we do have to take responsibility for our mental diet. And like I said before, live more consciously. And you know how the apps or the material you're watching is affecting you by how you're living your life. You know, are you feeling more balanced? Are you feeling more positive? Are you feeling more healthy? And if the answer is no, and you realize, hey, I'm using a lot of technology, maybe that's one of the problems. And I really need to, to set boundaries with that. You know, Carl, I'm curious, you know, you're in academia is the use of TikTok encouraged uh, on the university level too I mean look as, as a professor I would be remiss if I told my students not to use the internet that, mm. that would just be absurd but I would also be remiss if my students believed everything they learned on the internet and adopted these decisions so yeah. at the end of the day what we need to do is we need to teach people that the monsters of history are monsters, yeah. whether it's Hitler, whether it's Mao, whether it is Osama bin Laden, and communism just doesn't work. So that's what we as professors need to do on campuses, but at the same time, we don't want to ban technology. We don't want to ban speech, because ban is something we see in authoritarian regimes. Instead, we need to educate people, we need to empower them, and we need to make them crystal clear that even if they weren't alive when 9-11 yeah. happened, bin Laden is a bad guy. Carl, what you're talking about is the hard work, and you got to do the work if we want to change this generation's mind. Um, a lot of optimism there, Carl. Thanks so much, Lisa, as well, for joining the program. Thanks for having me on the show. So coming Thank up, you. Fox News 11.